The Lord be with you. Welcome to worship on this, the third Sunday of Advent. It is good to be with all of you as we worship God and prepare our hearts for the coming of Christ. Over the last three weeks, we have been focusing on a different theme uh, along with our Advent readings and our candle lighting. Uh, today, after weeks of hope and peace, we focus on joy. So as we worship today, May the joy and the peace and the hope of God fill your hearts and inspire you in this season. A couple of announcements as we begin worship service. Uh, first off, I'll begin with just our schedule for next week is a little bit different, so please join us for our worship times at 9 a.m. when we worship for our fourth Advent uh, service, and then later in the evening, there will not be another service, just the one at 9 a.m., in the evening at 7 p.m., join us for our Christmas Eve service, and then at 9.30 for another Christmas Eve service. You are welcome to any and all of them if you would like to attend all of them. Anybody else? Is it just me? Okay, good. We've got a couple. Perfect. So see, see you all sometime next week. It'll be good to be here for welcoming in Christmas. Um, please see the rest of the bulletin. We have a number of things. Winter Staycation is coming up on January 6th at 4 p.m., Join us on that Saturday. It'll be a great time. And then uh, Courtney had another announcement she wanted to make. And then we'll do it. Yeah. Hello. Um, just two quick announcements. Um, today, after the 1030 service, we have our annual gingerbread decorating event. Um, if you did not sign up and for it and you would like to come, the more the merrier. We will have pizza, um, do our gingerbread stuff, we'll have snacks. It'll be a lot of fun. So you're more than welcome to come out and join. Um, the next thing, and I think people might enjoy this one, um, I just wanted to save the date. Um, we just officially set the date for the spaghetti dinner. We'll be bringing it back. Um, it will be on March Saturday, March 2nd. Um, so just kind of put that in your calendar. Uh, we'll be looking if anybody would be interested in donating anything um, for the Tricky Tray uh, auctions, or we put the tickets in, we call it Tricky Tray, right? For the Tricky Tray, please let me know. Um, we'd be happy to take any and all donations for that as well. So save the date. We'll be selling tickets probably not till February. Thank you very much. And then two more announcements. We're just gonna keep going today. Um, as many of you may know, we often donate to our local Nazareth Food Bank. They stop during this season. Today is the last day of collecting for the food bank. Uh, that can be dropped off and donated over here. Uh, that will be collected and then sent in. And then they will be beginning taking collections in March. Uh, so we'll restart our collections here at that period. But during those months, if you would like to support uh, you can, uh, if you send a monetary donation to them, they can use that to give cards to people who are in need. Uh, they give gift cards to people who are in need during this season. So please just be aware of that. Uh, if you leave donations here, they don't have anywhere to go for a little while. Um, and then the last announcement is we would like to put together a Christmas uh, photo. And we wanted to ask you guys if you would participate. So if everybody who is here would gather in kind of the center of the church, I know I'm asking everybody to get up and move, it's calisthenics day. Uh, if you guys would gather together so we could take a picture, uh, please come into the center of the aisle, come forward, and it would be good to see you all. Like this area, I think would be good. Friends. Perfect. Just do something. Yeah, 
Put your hands down. Um, I think if you're standing near a pole candle, you should probably move either into the center or away. We don't want the pole candles obscuring anyone's faces. <laughs> and that is particularly the case as you move towards the back of the sanctuary. Okay? And what I'm going to ask you to do is, um, if you can see the lens of my camera, it can see you. Okay? If you cannot see the lens of my camera, it cannot see you and you should definitely move somewhere where you can. All right? <laughs> it is. All right. Friends, we want to take this picture as quickly as possible. So. Again, if you can't see the lens of my camera, it cannot see you. Otherwise, we're going to take this picture. I'm going to put the microphone down so I can hold my camera better. And then I'm going to give you a three, two, one. Everyone, uh, the, the theme for the, the third Sunday of Advent is joy. So you must all look very, very joyful, OK? <laughs> Thank you all for joining in with us for that. It, it was pretty joyful, I thought. And you may have noticed there are some individuals who are wearing some wonderful festive gear. You'll see what that's about in a little while. So with that... With that, let us begin with the confession and forgiveness. If you would please stand as you are able as we confess our sins to God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who opens the heavens and draws near to us with salvation. God is patient and merciful, desiring all to come to repentance. Trusting this promise of grace, let us confess our sin. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear these words of assurance. God clothes you with garments of salvation and covers you with robes of righteousness. In the tender compassion of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. God's covenant is eternal, and God's blessing rests upon us all. Amen.
Lord, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Praise to you, O God, who holds our joy and sorrow. You bring water to parched ground and life out of death. Bless us as this light grows. And send sorrow and sighing to flee away. Give us strength and patience, trusting that you are true to your promises. Transform the lives of all who suffer with your wonders near at hand. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins, they shall raise up the former devastations, they shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. 
He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from 1 Thessalonians. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. John the first chapter there was a man sent from God whose name was John he came as a witness to testify the light so that all might believe through him he himself was not the light but came to testify the light this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him who are you he confessed and did not deny it but confessed I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. As the prophet Elijah said, Now they had been sent from the Pharisees, They asked him, why are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stand the one whom you do not, who you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in this took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. 
I'd like to invite up the young of our congregation to come forward for a children's message. Leave those there. Good morning, you, everybody. How are you all doing? Good? How's your week been? Bad. Bad? Oh, no. Well, hopefully we can make that better, right? So we'll see. Well, I'm glad you're all able to join us today for our message and for worship. I wanted to ask you guys, so we've been looking at a couple of things over the last couple of weeks. Who remembers what we've been talking about, the words that have been our focus for the last two weeks? What have we said? Maybe some of our older kids may remember. Hope was, yep. That's today. So you have peace. So hope, peace, and joy. You guys got all three. Well done. Peaceful? Sure. <laughs> Peaceful. That's a good one, too. So today we are focusing on joy out of those three ideas. What does joy mean? Do you guys know what that means? Happiness? Yeah, what do you think? I saw some other hands come up. What else? Happiness as well? Yeah? What do you think? Kindness? Yeah. Joy? joy? Yeah. So joy is that great excitement, exuberance, high energy happiness, right? It's a wonderful thing. Have you guys ever been joyful? What's your favorite joyful song? What was that? <laughs> it's stuck in your head? It is joyful song? Oh, okay. Joyful songs do get stuck in our head. Now, is it really easy to be joyful on a good moment? Like, what's a good moment? Like, birthdays? Really joyful? Yeah? Uh, parties? Just in general? Cake? Presents? Is there something coming up that's really joyful? That might have presents? What do you guys think? Christmas? Yeah. So these are all wonderful, joyful things. Now, are there times that aren't as joyful? School? Sometimes? Yeah? <laughs> School's, school's the best. I'm glad you feel that way. It's very good. It is the best. Good. I'm glad to hear that. But sometimes you have to do things you don't like. Who has to go to the dentist sometimes? Is, is that joyful? Not always? Not always. Well, there are things that aren't joyful in our lives, things that sometimes are hard. But, you know, it's important to remember that even in hard moments, there's always something fun and something joyful about it. Like, you know, sometimes I had a hard time in school, but I had friends, and I had some teachers who made sure that people were happy, that we were enjoying what we learned, right? Have you guys had that? So joy when things are sometimes kind of hard. And I've had dentists who have been people who are wonderful and bright and sunny, even though I'm going to go get my tooth drilled on. Not, not the best day for me, but they still bring joy to it. There are lots of places and lots of people who, when things are hard, bring happiness into it. And we're not necessarily supposed to overly talk about Christmas, because Christmas is next week, but we are thinking about that and we're preparing for it. And there's this one part of the Christmas story that always reminds me about that joy and that light in the darkness. Now, do you guys remember the story about when Jesus is born? What shines brand new in that night? Michaela, a star? That's right. So a star comes up in the darkness, and it brings light and joy to all who see it. Now today, I can't make a star appear, but Mrs. White made us a special gift to remind us about the joy and the light of Christ that is coming into the world. So it is a cookie, and I know that somebody, some, some people here can't have cookies, but we have other things we can figure out. But for everybody who can have a cookie, please come forward, and as you head back to your uh, uh, chair, please enjoy. Here you go, buddy. Thank you. No? Okay. Here you go. Here you are. 
course. There you go, Simon. And here you go. Perfect. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you for all. Thank you all for coming up. That was wonderful. And before we begin, can we give Michaela a, a big thank you for reading for us? She did a wonderful job. And all of the youth who came forward, all of the families, it was, thank you guys for so much for making this part of our Christmas season so wonderful and filled with joy. I guess it's not Christmas, Advent season, filled with joy. There are pastors who'd get really mad at me if I said the wrong thing, so it happens. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Come Holy Spirit, come Lord Jesus, come God our Father, shine in our world, Fill us with your hope, with your life, with your love and joy and peace and wonder. As we prepare our hearts for the coming of the Messiah, transform us, renew us, call us to be part of your kingdom. Amen. Throughout the book of John, there is a theme that is used over and over and it begins right there at the beginning of John. This is after his statements about Jesus being there at the beginning, but it starts fairly early, where John will start talking about a cosmic battle, a cosmic war between the dark and the light. The light being life and freedom, healing and peace and joy, and the darkness being pain and suffering the realities of the world. And over and over, John will proclaim that the light is come into the world, that the light is coming into the world, that there is wonder and beauty just around the corner, but in this moment and in this time, there is often so much darkness and hardship and trial. Last week, as part of the sermon, I talked about this in our kind of theme as we move forward, how in the old world, I think it was more easy for people to reconcile the harshness of reality. In our current world, there's lots of blessings that we receive without a lot of effort, without a lot of warrant, but they're part of our world. We have food that is pretty readily, readily available and convenient. Not many of us are hunting mammoths like our ancestors. Not many of us are plowing fields with our animals and with our hands, right? No? Anybody else? There's lots of convenience, and yes, it does not mean that the world is perfectly easy. It doesn't mean that there's no problems, but hardship is sometimes distant from us. And some people are so blessed that any idea of suffering and hardship are foreign to them, and when they see it, they just reject reality, and they reject what's in front of them. For our ancient forebears, it's not distant and it's not difficult. And really, I don't think it's difficult for us either. I think often it is important to focus on and think about our blessings, but there's still the reality in our lives of great hardship. Again, maybe it's not what people suffered in the past in the same ways, but still, today, there is lots of darkness. There is pain. There is brokenness. There is disease. There is hurt. There is sin. Sometimes our sin. Sometimes the pain of the sins of those who are around us, those who we love, who betray us and hurt us. The world has lots of hardship. Our lives have hardship, too. And so it's clear that just as in John's day, just as it always has been for humanity, there is still this cosmic battle of dark versus light, of the way the world is versus the way the world should and could be. But as John proclaims, light is breaking in, that there is hope 
and peace, that there is something wonderful just around the corner, and that in His day, it was coming. He was preparing the way for those to know that the King was on His way. He was the voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord and make His path straight. He was not the Messiah. He was not the one who would be bringing the light. He was one Himself who had received it and was shining that small fraction of light that he had so that others could see it too, so that others would not be blinded by the glare and the brightness of the coming King, of the coming Messiah, of the Son of God who was just around the corner. He wanted to open the door so that those who had been living in darkness might see and embrace the truth, might see and embrace goodness, might see and embrace hope and peace and joy and love. But the world still wasn't ready. Now, there's a movie that I think is theologically questionable in a lot of places, but is a pretty funny comedy anyway, and there are some really great scenes. Anybody seen Bruce Almighty? I think it's a fun movie. And one of the scenes that I actually think is really good is Bruce goes to this warehouse where he, meet, unbeknownst to him, meets God. God is working on a light up in the rafters, and Bruce goes to see him, and the light starts shining down, and it's absolutely glaring. And Bruce says, you know, it, like, that's so bright. He cringes down, he can't see it. And there's this innocuous phrase that they have Morgan Freeman, who is playing God, say, and I think it's a really great phrase, of, yeah, everybody thinks that at first. Right? The light of God is so blinding to those who have lived in darkness that it is glaring at first, that it is too hard to see. It hurts us purely to just glimpse it for a moment. But that's only at first. The light of God has come into the world, and it is Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of Luke, there is this one scene where we start to see what the light of God is and what it does and what it looks like for our world and for our lives. It's this powerful moment where Jesus has gone to the synagogue to pray and to teach, as apparently he has done in numerous times, and he goes up, he reads the scroll from Isaiah, he reads our first gospel, our first text from today, from the Old Testament, and he proclaims, after all of this has been read, after reading through that here is a moment in time where the poor will be uplifted, where the prisoner will be freed, where the hungry will be fed, where the broken will be healed, where righteousness will reign, where God's justice will come into the world and evil will be destroyed. When Jesus proclaims all of this through the words of Isaiah, he sits back down in what is, has to be just an absolute power move and says, today the gospel has been, or the, to get today, the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And in that moment, everybody loses their mind. Because in their world, in their understanding, the light of God cannot shine so bright quite yet. The Messiah cannot come here in this moment for them. You see, the world didn't understand that there was goodness in the midst of it. It didn't understand that light was shining forth because everybody was looking in the wrong direction and leaning into the darkness. But the light was there and it was good and it was righteous. And it was Jesus Christ, the Son of God, come into the world to carry the burden of our sin and to redeem it. And over and over in the scriptures and through the life of Jesus, there's something powerful about this idea of joy. Not just joy in the wonderful moments. There are lots of moments to be joyful. Birth of Jesus, birthdays, celebrations, the birth of children. There are lots of moments that are absolutely and without question beautiful and intrinsically beautiful. But there are also moments where things are hard 
and we have to choose to make them beautiful. We have to choose to carry the light of Christ for those who have not yet seen it. We have to choose to be a city on a hill to take the light and not cover it with a bushel basket. There's this book that is not a Christian book, but a book that I have read a number of years ago that I think has some poignant topics. It's a book on leadership called Extreme Ownership by Jocko Wilning. Don't know if you've ever read that book. Uh, quick backstory on it. It, it. He is a former Navy SEAL who is uh, the... How do you describe Navy SEALs? The uh, alpha male, super macho type who like all the dude stuff. Uh, he, but he wrote this book on leadership because that is what he's become at this point in his life. He's a leadership speaker and does all sorts of work. And in this book, there's this one story that has always fascinated me. He's describing a moment where he's in his uh, basic underwater demolitions training, his buds training, and he and the, his cohort of fellow recruits have been dropped off in an estuary in California. Now, an estuary is where the fresh water and the seawater meet. In California, they're not clean. Uh, they are dirty, grimy, muddy, cold, briny, and awful. And this group of soldiers has been dropped off in the middle of it to float and to hold to each other in misery, in suffering, and in pain. All while their instructors curse at them and tell them to quit and tell them that they're weak and that they should just give it up. They tell them that if they just surrender to the suffering and to the pain that they're experiencing and raise their hands or call out for, to quit, that they can end everything. They can go home, they can have a warm meal, they can be, sleep in nice beds and they don't have to wake up tomorrow and run into the surf and into the sand. They can just let it all go. Who would be tempted at that point? But he describes that in the middle of this encounter, in the middle of this story, while they are up to their ears in literal muck and mud and brine, one of the men starts to sing. Now, the singing, as he describes it, is uh, definitely not church appropriate, but it gets the point across. In this moment, when things are dark and terrible, one person chooses to sing, and he describes how when that person started to sing, the rest of the spirits of those who were still there, of those who were still struggling and still striving, were also raised. That in the darkness, there was a light. And that as a leader, that is our calling. You, people of God, whether you are somebody who needs to hear the music, or whether you are somebody who is singing out in the darkness. There is light and there is joy for all of us. It is the light and joy of Jesus Christ. It is the light and grace and love of God come into the world so that we might be renewed, refreshed, and redeemed, even when we're up to our ears in muck. This is the grace of God. This is Jesus Christ, the love of God, who comes into our world and sings to a broken and painful reality, who even through his life, through his death on a cross, sings from that place of darkness, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Jesus Christ, who is buried, who is raised, Jesus Christ, who was born innocent to a virgin in a poor family who had no place to lay his head. Here is hope, and hope abundant, hope for me and for you. And so what may we sing, may we join in the Spirit of God, may we bring light to the darkness, and may we be like John, because we're not the light but we are preparing the way and shining the reflected light of Christ to all those who are willing to see.
May God bless you and transform you. May the light of God shine in your hearts, and may you hear the voice of God welcome you with singing peace and joy. Amen. church, let us profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, With hope and expectation, we offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all who await God's day of restoration. Fill our mouths with laughter 
and our tongues with shouts of joy as we bear witness to the great things you have done. Give your church a spirit of gladness as we gather and as we are sent. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Let the trees of the field sing your praise. Protect forests, orchards, rainforests, and all wooded areas from disease and deforestation. Keep us grateful for their gifts of oxygen, food, shade, and shelter. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. You love justice and promise your favor for those who are oppressed, brokenhearted, and incarcerated. Grant wisdom and compassion to those who work for public safety and who, all who work within prisons, jails, and courts, that mercy may increase and violence wither away. We pray especially for those affected by the conflicts in the Middle East and Ukraine. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Give us strength to pray for a world without ceasing. Provoke us toward love and good deeds for all who are in need, especially those who are ill. Kate, Pam, Shannon, Bev, and Susie. Provide for all without adequate housing, food, employment, or access to health care. Empower us as helpers and advocates. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Open our hearts to those who serve as truth tellers in our church and in our society. Bless leaders in church and society in their task of proclamation. Amplify voices of peacekeeper, peacemakers, advocates, and especially those whose voices are ignored or marginalized. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With those we name now, either aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With gratitude, we rejoice in the saints who witness to your life in all circumstances, in whom your spirit was not quenched, even in death. Through them, teach us always to hold fast to what is good. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Listen to these and all our prayers, O God of hosts and restore us with your great and everlasting mercy. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace.
receive and bless these gifts of your own bounty. Let them be a sign of your steadfast love and faithfulness for all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new, in the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy God, the beginning and the end, our salvation and our hope, we praise you for creating a world of order and beauty. When we brought on chaos, cruelty, and despair, you sent the prophets to proclaim your justice and mercy. At this end of the ages, your Son, Jesus, came to bring us your love and to heal all the suffering world. And so we remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, took bread blessed it and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant shed in my blood, given for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, his life, and resurrection, we await his coming again in righteousness and peace. Send your Spirit on us and on this bread and wine we share. Strengthen our faith, increase our hope, and bring to birth the justice and joy of your Son. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In this meal, righteousness and peace meet together. Come, take your place at the table.
May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Amen. together. Nourished by this meal, send us out to proclaim your good news of liberation and release, brought to birth in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Go in peace. Keep awake.